fourth view would be as a composition language, a software composition architecture language, because it has a fairly radical new approach to module systems where a component is a class or a trait. Composition is mixing in traits into classes. And uh, you have a very rich component interconnect with it, be it with parameters or abstract members or self-types. And all this gives you essentially the power that people typically use dependency frameworks like Juice or Spring in the language and a subject to a static type system. So I think that's, that's another interesting view of it. So of course, you might now by now worry and say, well, how can it be all these things, scripting language, next Java, component language, concurrency language, wouldn't it be a huge kitchen sink thing? And uh, the answer is that, yes, of course, there is this danger, and you have to combat it very, very hard. And that's what we really try to do every step on the way. So what we try to do is to make Scala a deep language rather than a broad language. So uh, a broad language is a language which has many, many individual features. And a deep language is a, is a language which has some very fundamental and powerful capabilities to compose and abstract things that then give users the, the possibility to design these things themselves, uh, so in libraries. And that's essentially the Scala approach. So it, yeah, a lot of the things that you see in Scala are actually not in the language, but they are done in just standard libraries or libraries that, that our users do for us. They just look like uh, uh, standard language syntax, but it's not. Really. So the essence of Scala, the key design principle, is really that we wanted to unify object-oriented and functional program. Uh, we really wanted to have a fusion of the two, not have them side by side, or have some excuse of uh, some small functional features on an inherently object-oriented language, or some small object system on an inherently functional language. We really wanted to have a symmetric integration, and I think that's what, what is, is the main trait of Scala. That's really the, the essence of it. And what it gives us is great scalability. So we can go from small to large, from pre performance to tailored extensions. That's sort of what this extension, what this combination of functional and, uh, and object oriented gives you. So a uh, quick history. So we started work. Uh, so as I told you, I'm, I'm coming from Java, uh, from the Java world. And when uh, I then moved to uh, the EPFL, I said, well, actually, now it might be a good good idea to start a new language effort, which sort of fixes some of the problems that we noted uh, in trying to be backwards compatible with, with Java. So Scala only tries to be white code compatible, but not really, it's not really an extension of Java. And uh, at the time I said, well, Java at the time was really king of the hill, big cool language that everybody was going to. And I said, well, five years from now, things will be different. The pendulum will swing back, and that's what eventually happened, I think. So the first distribution we had in 2003, uh, there was a redesign. Uh, so the, the Scala 2.x series that started in 2006, and ever since 2006, we have seen fairly rapid pickup. So from the, from now, where do we go from from there? So our next planned version is Scala 2.8, which will have a redesigned collection library, very uh, clean, uniform design. It will have, uh, as a language extension, named and default parameters. Probably the thing I'm most excited about is it will have uh, a way to make generics much, much faster than uh, you could do it be until now with a, a specialized annotation. So what it does, it, it, it will tailor uh, generic implementations for uh, the primitive types you use them on. And I think that will be the first time when you not only track Java in performance, but then we can actually bypass it because that's something that you won't find in Java and that will really give you a, a lot better performance. So we saw really quite dramatic improvements on our tests. It will have also uh, improved tool supports for both for the IDEs and the Repox. And after that, for the next five years, say, uh, what we plan to really concentrate on is concurrency on all levels. So on uh, the primitives, so we already have the actors, that's great but there are also other forms of parallelisms and concurrencies that we want to maybe study and, 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 and combine <coughs> with the actors uh, on uh, the uh, fundamental building blocks, on the types, and on the tools. So in five years, what, what our goal is that in five years we will be the language of choice when it comes to program, to current systems, and multi-core computers, and things like that. How to get into it, how to learn it, 
So uh, a lot of things have happened there. So in this year we'll see, I think, five or six, six books coming out uh, on uh, Scala topics. Uh, if you just want to get started and find out on the web, there's a nice series on first steps in Scala by Artima. There's a really great blog series by Daniel Spivak called Scala for Java Refugees. <laughs> and there are uh, three books published, plus one on Lyft, plus two more in the pipeline. And if you want to find out more, you can track it uh, on Scalalang.org. Thank you.